Hey crafty friends, this is Chelsea. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm gonna to be making a layout with this brand new Hope and Kindness special. It's gorgeous stickers and papers, and I'm just gonna give you a brief look at them here at the beginning. I love all these beautiful floral patterns. There's some subtle ones, some more bold patterns, even cut aparts, which we don't usually have in the Close to My Heart collections. We usually have pocket cards but I like that they're included in the paper collection. Now this is the special for May, celebrating National Scrapbooking Month. And there is a scrapbooking workshop, card making workshop, and also a mini album. So you can buy each of these things individually or you can get them together in bundles. So I'm gonna link all of that down in the description box for you if you wanna have a look. Now, if you're not all about the bold pattern paper, this cardstock pack is awesome. So it looks like textured cardstock, but it's actually perfectly smooth. And it just looks kind of either like painted on one side and textured and worn on the other side. So this could work with all different kinds of projects. And it's in the colors that coordinate with this pack. I really love having coordinating cardstock because it makes projects so easy. And these two craft sheets are my favorite out of the pack because they look like they've been painted but they are perfectly smooth. This one here has a whole square that looks like it's been gessoed or painted. I cannot wait to use that on a page. There are some beautiful craft laser cut die cuts. So there's some super delicate florals and leaves, as well as some printed pieces that have that white resist on them. And then maybe my favorite, the doily thin cut dies. There's a little one and a big one and that big one it's big it's five and three quarter inches and of course we have a stamp and thin cut set everything you see in blue there has a coordinating thin cut so some flowers some beautiful words that would work great for titles for my layout today i'm also combining another kit this is the national scrapbooking day many wishes card kit and i just love this layered floral stencil and also the sentiment set in here I'm gonna use both of these on my page. If you wanna see some of the cards that I've made with that kit, just follow me on Instagram because I will be posting them there. I'm starting off with my favorite 12 by 12 white piece of cardstock. And then that stripe piece is five inches by 10 and a half. And then the floral pieces are one by nine. I thought I'd just cut two strips rather than wasting any. And that yellow strip is a half by 10. And then I cut two of the large doilies on just regular craft cardstock. Isn't that detail beautiful? I was a little skeptical that that detailed die would cut out with my regular sandwich. So for my big shot, I used the magnetic base platform. And then I used the precision plate topped with the die and the paper cutting down into that metal precision plate and then topping that with another regular cutting plate. And they cut out beautifully with just one pass. If you don't have a metal plate for your machine, you might find that you wanna use some extra shims of chipboard or cardstock. Just play around with your particular machine. Whatever you do, if there's a lot of resistance, don't force it through your machine because too thick of a sandwich could break your die cutting machine. I have four photos that are two and a half by three and a half inches that I wanna use on this layout. I have two of them matted with that peach cardstock that came in the kit and just with a quarter inch mat. And then I wanted some variation. So two of them I have a white mat on and then desert rose cardstock. And those are just eighth of an inch bigger. I cut out this beautiful image from the cut apart sheet. This was like a four by six card and I just left a little craft border around it and that's where I'm gonna put my journaling. Now this is where I'm gonna bring in those layering floral stencils from the Many Wishes card kit. I wanna have them coming out from behind my journaling and just kind of build up the bottom part of my layout. I'm going to washi tape it in place so it's not sliding. Then I grab a sticky note to do some masking, but where I put it makes no sense. I will realize that and fix it here in a second. I'm grabbing peach ink and papaya to have a darker shade. And then I'm going to use one of these blending brushes. There you can see I figured out the mask was in the wrong area. It's just protecting my pattern paper so I don't get ink all over it. 
I'm starting in the center of the flowers and blending outwards so that the middle will be the darkest and then it will kind of fade off lighter towards the edges. And I'm just blending in circular motions. And if you like a lighter application of ink, these brushes work really well. I find with an inking tool, they're great for a heavy application, but just light inking, the brushes work the best. I got mine off of Amazon and if I can find them, I will link them below for you. Next up, I'm going to bring in that card kit stamp set and this scripty image that says lots of love. I'm going to be stamping it with papaya ink, but I decided second generation would look better. So I ink it up, stamp it off on a scrap piece, and then stamp it over my stencil. When you're doing this stamped stenciling technique, you just want to make sure that you're using pretty good pressure and transferring the image as best as you can to all the open areas. Something like this that's just a single stamp, I'm also varying where I put it down. So sometimes it's more to the left, sometimes it's more to the right, sometimes I stamp it twice in a row. Uh, you just don't want it to look like a repeat pattern all the way down. So that's why I grabbed more sticky notes to mask off and make sure I wasn't getting ink elsewhere on my layout. This is really easy to do with background stamps too. Uh, you just want to make sure that you're transferring the ink well. So if it was a larger stamp, I would just take it right off the block and use my fingers to kind of press it down into the open areas. This flower has lots of open spots on the stencil, kind of larger open areas, which is ideal for this technique. If you have a very detailed stencil and you try and stamp over it, sometimes it's hard to get any ink transfer. I've really been enjoying playing with this stencil. I made a few different cards with it, and as I mentioned earlier, they will be over on my Instagram account sometime in the next week or so. I am making those cards with my VIPs. So if you're part of my VIP club, you get to come along on the Zoom and watch me make them live. I do two Zooms a month. I do a card making one and a scrapbooking one. And as long as you're in Canada, you can pay one yearly fee. It's $45 for the year. And that gets you your 15% product credit on all your purchases. And all of my Zoom classes all year long are free. I will leave all the information and the link down in the description box for you. You can see here I'm using lots of sticky notes to mask off because usually I skip that part and then I regret it later. Um, I tried to mask off the doily, which was kind of hard because it had that scalloped edge. So I did end up getting a little bit of ink on it, but I will show you how I fix that later. Now I'm just repeating the same things I've already showed you. So I'm going to skip ahead to where I started doing the leaves. I have sage ink and rosemary ink. Sage is the lighter green and these two work perfectly together to add two different shades for leaves. I love sage and rosemary together started blending the leaves at the base and then blended outwards from there so actually by the time you get to the edge of the leaves they're kind of fading off and i love how that looks now there are definite spots where the leaves line up perfectly with the flowers but you don't always have to do it in those spots this one down here at the bottom i felt like it just needed the leaves there so it's not supposed to fit there but it worked out just fine I'm continuing to mask off, trying to save my papers and stuff from getting ink all over them and just tucking leaves in here and there so I have some nice greenery going around the outside of my cluster of flowers. I can't tell you guys how many times I have skipped the masking step and I always regret it. Always. I always end up getting a little bit of ink somewhere where I don't want it. And I'm like, why didn't I just take the time to mask it off? So frustrating. I thought this corner was looking a little bit bare, so I just tucked a couple little leaves up there as well. And now comes the process of me moving little strips and embellishments around, trying to find the perfect placement for everything. I cut out so much footage of this, I thought I would save you the pain of watching that. Now this was the point where I realized I had gotten some ink on that craft doily. I grabbed my little sanding block and considering the craft cardstock does not have a white core, I thought maybe I could just sand it away and it worked perfectly. I didn't have a ton of ink on there. It was just on the very top surface. So the sanding fixed that. 
These little sentiment strips are from the cut apart sheet and I cut apart three of them to kind of see if they would go. They were sayings that I thought matched my page. And then all the craft die cuts are from that laser cut die cut package that I showed you. There was some really pretty hearts and I was kind of struggling with how to embellish this page because I felt like it was already busy enough and I wanted something there, but I didn't want there to be a ton. I like this open heart here at the top, but I didn't like how that strip kind of showed underneath of it. So I'm just going to use the heart to help me line up and trim off that paper on an angle. And that way it ends right before the heart. Now, while I'm messing around with these hearts and trying to get them in the ideal location, <laughs> I'm gonna tell you a little bit about the story behind this page. Uh, usually I make double page layouts. I have for a long time. And I've started making single ones now that I have Isabella because I find there's so many little everyday stories that just there's not enough pictures or story to warrant a double page layout. So I've been using my single pages to tell those little everyday stories. For instance, once a week, Isabella goes and stays with my friend for the day so that I have a work day and time to get things done. And when she comes home, she's always in a super silly mood, tons of energy, talking lots, and just running around giggling. And that's really all this story is about. Definitely worth documenting, but maybe not a double page worth. We are on the homeward stretch for this layout, you guys. I have some rose gold liquid pearls squeezed them out on my block and then I added some water and now I'm just mixing them really well. You have to really mix it to get it to incorporate the water and then I'm just going to use that little paintbrush and start flicking all over my page. I love the way the rose gold looks because it just adds this really metallic shimmery dots. Now if you're doing this at the end of your layout like me you definitely want to cover up those photos with printer paper or paper towel or something. I have more than once forgotten to do that and ended up with splatter on my photos, which did not make me very happy. Of course, you can always reprint them, but that's an extra step. So I'm just kind of masking off with the paper towel, trying to keep that splatter where I want it. If I wasn't doing this for a video, I would definitely throw this in my little splatter box. But as it was after this, I went around and wiped down my surface to make sure I didn't have any pearls drying anywhere I didn't want them. I used a journaling pen and added that story that I told you guys to this little banner. I love how that turned out. It's such a pretty way to incorporate journaling. My first inclination was to make it a title piece, but I think I like it more as journaling. Now I'm using some foam squares to just pop this piece up and kind of make it the centerpiece of my layout. You guys maybe noticed I don't have a big title on this page. I thought the you are amazing and the smile pieces were enough and they fit the design better. So here is a closer look at this page. Unfortunately, you can't see the splatter super well, but I will include a couple close up photos. So hopefully you can see it a little bit better. If you're looking for something to do this weekend for National Scrapbooking Day, Close to My Heart is hosting a two day event. It's a free event and there is going to be five different classes taking place. I will leave the link for all the information to that down in the description for you. I hope you enjoyed this video and that this gave you some ideas for your own pages and that stamp stenciling might be something you'll give a try. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.